he was. He was not a character that comes to a name of a homily, which was simply called the greatest gift. Dear friends, you will now know we are in the third Sunday of Advent, and that Christmas is officially galloping towards us. How suitable then. We sing this afternoon our carols by candlelight. Such are the traditions of the season. And we're always pleased to honour them here at Money Rate, long subscribing to Presbyterian Church. In this church, in this place, we try as best we can to balance informality and tradition. And there is a place for both. On occasions such as these, it is only right and proper to hear our scripture readings in the King James Version and to sing again those traditional carols. The giving of gifts is also traditional at Christmas. Now that always takes some planning. What is the best gift to give someone? What gift best conveys love and affection for the recipient? And what to choose for each and every family and friend, where each and every person, after all, is very different in their tastes and temperament. And this task, as we all know, can take time and thought. It is, in truth, a real challenge. And wouldn't it be great if we could all get or give just one incredible gift? which everyone would always remember. And in its giving, that gift could be, could be transformative of people's lives for the better. And what about if that gift was free? What about if that gift would cost us nothing at all? Wouldn't our reaction surely be, wow, now that is really something worth having really something worth remembering, really something worth celebrating. But here's the thing. That great gift has already been given. It has been given, it has been offered to each of us here, to all of you here, to everyone who has come before us, and to everyone who will come after us, freely offered, transformative of our lives. And it's this great gift which is revealed in John's Gospel in the beginning and anticipated in Isaiah as that great light that could save and redeem us all. It is the gift from God himself to each of you, to all of us. And this gift took the form of a child, of a baby, given to us in all of its fragility, vulnerable, seemingly unimportant, born into poverty, yet inspiring the wisest of men to travel countless miles to seek him and to kneel by him and the most terrible of kings even to plot to kill him. Maybe then, perhaps like Herod, we too can refuse this gift. But how awful for us to do so. We can, you know, turn our back on God's love, but the God we worship has never and will never turn his back on us. And we know this because of the gift of his son. And that thought alone, I think, deserves some prayerful reflection. No wonder the angels sang. For they understood, even if sometimes we as human beings do not understand the value of the gift that had been given. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. The gift of a Saviour, in fulfilment of prophecy. And you know, 
dear friends, we do all need to be saved. From the sin which is at the root of all hatred in the world. From that human pride and human prejudice which gets between us and God and gets between us and each other. And this gift does save us. It changes us. Once and forever, if we but let it. So the angels understood, and Herod did not. The shepherds understood, and like the wise men came and offered their tributes to the young mother Mary, to the newborn baby given to us to save us and to save the world. And what about their gifts? The gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. What was that about? Surely strange things to give to a child. Strange, certainly, but appropriate. And by the symbolism of their gifts, they, demonstrate, they demonstrated that they were wise men indeed. And that they at least understood this incredible gift which had been given to us all by the God who loves us beyond our comprehension and beyond our deserving. Gold? Well, that was for his kingship. For here in the manger was the king of all. Frankincense? Well, that was for his divinity. That in this small, red, poor, vulnerable, crying child, God himself was met. God's very son. God's gift of himself to all of us. And myrrh. What about myrrh? Well, myrrh was for his sacrifice. But here in the manger also lay the sacrifice, the lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world. Myrrh, perhaps, I think sometimes was the most powerful of the three gifts. <coughs> the implication that this gift would voluntarily, voluntarily give of itself so that we all might live and love as we ought, so that we all might be reborn into his likeness, both now and forever. What a gift. What a gift. And what powerful love is expressed in its giving. What incredible, incomprehensible generosity this gift of baby Jesus, this gift of a child to each of you here, this gift of a child to each of you here and to all of us. No wonder then we read in scripture that when they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they fell down and worshipped him. I just wonder, on this third Sunday of Advent, can we do any less? Can we <coughs> accept this gift in humility, in reverence, in love? And can we allow this gift to change our lives now and forever? This gift of love, this gift of life, this gift of Jesus Christ, greatest gift.